Sound suppression water system now being armed for release. Confirmation we have three main engines ready for ignition. Space shuttle now on internal power. Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill and drain valves are closed. Solid rocket booster flight data recorders are activated. And the handoff to Atlantis's onboard computers. Atlantis now in control of the countdown. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. Houston now controlling. Atlantis begins its penultimate journey to shore up the International Space Station. Atlantis now in the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis almost two miles in altitude, almost six miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center already, traveling 500 miles an hour. The three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance going into the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. 55 seconds into the flight, all systems operating normally, 900 miles an hour. The speed of Atlantis right now, six miles in altitude, nine miles downrange. Atlantis, go with throttle up. Copy, go with throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Charlie Hobaugh, joined on the flight deck by pilot Butch Wilmore, flight engineer Randy Bresnick and Leland Melvin. Seated down on the mid deck are Mike Foreman and Bobby Satcher, kicking off their work week with a Monday commute to orbit. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight, Atlantis 13 miles in altitude, 15 miles downrange, traveling almost 2,000 miles an hour. Three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells, three good main engines. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, 10 seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. Atlanta steering into the center lane of Highway 129 en route to the International Space Station. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, 34 miles in altitude, 48 miles downrange. Atlanta's traveling 3,200 miles an hour. The propulsion officer in mission control reports that the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on the afterburners. Copy two engine down. Atlantis flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining about a half a ton of fuel per second from the large fuel tank. Coming up on the three minute mark into the flight, Atlantis 46 miles in altitude, 81 miles downrange, traveling almost 4,000 miles an hour. Atlantis speeding straight as an arrow toward its date with the International Space Station Wednesday morning. Three and a half minutes into the flight, all of Atlantis' systems functioning by the book. 55 miles in altitude, 120 miles downrange, traveling almost 5,000 miles an hour.
Atlantis, negative return. Atlantis copies, negative return. Atlantis now too far downrange, too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. All three engines performing perfectly. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis now 62 miles in altitude, 180 miles downrange, traveling almost 6,000 miles an hour. All systems uh, performing normally. Atlantis on course, on track for its preliminary orbit. The environmental systems officer reports a good flash of apparator system activated for Atlantis, providing cooling for the shuttle's avionics until the payload bay doors are opened about an hour and a half into the flight. Atlantis, press to ATO. Copy, press to ATO. That call up from Capcom Chris Ferguson indicating that Atlantis can now make minimal orbital altitude targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three engines continue to perform normally, as do the auxiliary power units and the three power producing fuel cells. Five and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis now 67 miles in altitude, 312 miles downrange, traveling almost 8,000 miles an hour. Atlantis now beginning to roll to a heads-up position, the main engine swiveling, enabling, enabling the shuttle to uh, move to a heads-up position above its fuel tank, gaining more favorable communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system as it heads uphill. Atlantis, press to Miko, single engine Zaragoza 104. Press to Miko, single engine Zaragoza 104. That call from Capcom Chris Ferguson uh, to Commander Charlie Hobaugh indicating that Atlantis can make normal Atlantis, orbital non cutoff non targets in the event of an engine failure. Go for the pitch. Okay, nominal shutdown, go for plus X, go for the pitch. Now six minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Atlantis, 66 miles in altitude, almost 500 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling almost 11,000 miles an hour. 90 seconds left in powered flight. Atlantis, single engine press 104. Single engine press 104. Coming up on the seven and a half minute mark into the flight, the main engines will once again be throttled down to limit the stress on the shuttle and its six crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Atlantis approaching a speed of more than four miles a second. At the time of main engine cutoff a minute from now, Atlantis will enter its preliminary orbit at a speed of five miles a second. Seven minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis providing a smooth ride uphill for Commander Charlie Hobaugh and his crew. 700 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling 15,000 miles an hour. Eight minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Standing by for main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff confirmed by the booster officer. Standing by for external tank separation. And the bird's eye view from the external tank camera of external tank separation. Atlantis now in its preliminary orbit. 
Commander Charlie Hobaugh will now maneuver Atlantis so that cameras embedded in the shuttle's umbilical well can perform photography of the discarded external fuel tank. And Mike Foreman and Leland...